respected guests on the podium, respected guests in front of me, Swati and Mr. Ramnathan and all the people who have worked very hard in Janagraha for today's function and to ensure that the award giving was free and fair and well deserved. Let me say thank you very much for inviting me to this function. I don't know why I was asked to speak. I asked them, is it because I am the wife of my husband or do you want me to tell you a little of the work he did in this area? And I think I will choose the latter. I, I wish I am right in thinking that that was the intention. I think the most difficult thing in the world is democratic decentralization. Having faced it at first hand, it's so difficult to move people, to move governments, to see that there is no corruption, to see that things get done. And everything is so slow and people don't give good answers in time and everybody says I'm a very busy person I have to go for the other meeting I have to rush to some place or the other it's it's the most difficult thing in the world when I entered service we didn't have democratic decentralization thoughts were being expressed about it so you can imagine how ancient I am in the service so Thoughts were being expressed about it and I, I, we had to deal with what is called the community development program with block development officers and so on. Now that was not too complicated but we wondered when all these things were phased out what would take its place and then all these reports came I don't have to tell you the history or anything of it. But in Kerala People are generally a little more aware than in many of the other states. I think it must be due to their education. There are many studies on why it is so and so forth. And in the uh, results you find Trivandrum is right on top of the list. Why? Because I think they are a little more alert, educated, they want something for themselves, they are assertive by nature and my husband and I we entered the Kerala Kadar more than 50 years ago and the first thing, first job he had was um, the Administrative Reforms Commission for Kerala State and in that this question came up as to what is to be done for giving power to the people at the lowest stage. Then there were all those committees, you know, Balwantrai Mehta Committee, Ashok, all those committees which I am not going to go into. And I remember Mr. EMS Nambudripad, he was the chief minister then, he called my husband and he said, you are a member of the Administrative Reforms Committee, I want you to sit down and prepare, this is the report which he prepared at the instance of Mr. EMS Nambudripad. That was the first time that something was being studied, collated and brought out as a book. And my husband had a delightful sense of humor, he's written in that book, that when I joined service, it was 1958. Now I'm writing this in 1988, that is 30 years. I hope it doesn't take another 30 years for its implementation and that they will be enjoying, people will be enjoying the fruits of democratic decentralization. Alas, that is not so, but there are seeds of it. I'm not a pessimist myself, a lot has been done and organizations like Janagraha are doing so much. Truly I admire them, the patience they have, the collection of money that they have to do, the 
ensuring that there are no loopholes for corruption. I tell you, it's a very difficult subject. I remember in the old days in Shankar's Weekly, there was a cartoon. Mr. Gulzari Lal Nanda, I don't know how many of you remember him. He was a great man who wanted to prevent corruption or keep it at its lowest. And Shankar's Weekly had a cartoon of a big dam with so many, you know, those holes through which water come out. And he goes and plugs in one hole, water comes out of the other. He goes and plugs that, it comes out from some other. So it's like that. It seems to be an eternal problem. I don't know what we are going to do about it because if you see today's or uh, yesterday's report about Bengaluru, they say the chief reason is corruption. So a lot of uh, aspects have to be taken uh, into account when you talk of democratic decentralization. I'm glad that um, mm, Swati and uh, um, Ramesh are concentrating on the urban area. If you take up the rural area also, it's too much of a big cake to handle. Uh, I've seen some of the excellent work that is going on in Bangalore and I wish them luck. In the 55 years that I was with my husband, I wondered what he did to earn this, you know, this kind of a meeting, celebrating him and in his name giving awards for excellence in urban decentralization. And I think the one thing, you know, he studied in Ramakrishna Mission School. Very high wa values were embedded in his mind. He was a very disciplined person and man of few words, but whatever he said mattered a great deal. This is what I learned from. But he was a great teacher also. I remember that you know, he was a secretary planning, I think, and he had to come to Delhi for all those planning commission meetings. Do you remember those? Uh, so one of his officers said, Sir, last minute he came running to him, they were all to leave, you know, they used to go in hordes, hordes wow, from each state, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, this place, that place, to Delhi, to talk with the planning commission to get more money. So he said, sir, we can't tally these numbers. I think many other secretaries was, would have said, please go and do it and come and see me. But he said, come on, let us sit down. And they sat for hours until they found out what had happened. He was a great teacher. And I think that because of his philosophy of learning Throughout life, what do, you, what do you call that? The three L's, long, uh, long life learning, lifelong learning, sorry, lifelong learning. That was his motto and perhaps that is why he was able to succeed, you know. He was a favorite of both the governments, the communist-led government and the congress-led government. And the reason for this was that he could, he would try to find a solution for whatever they thought was in the public interest. If it was not in the public interest, he had the guts to tell them, Sir, this cannot be done. And they would listen because they knew that he had studied it and he was not telling them something which was untrue. So as we, I think time is uh, very short. I wish the minister had been here. I would have liked to say a few more things. Anyway, I thank Swati and Ramesh for organizing such a wonderful meeting and uh, wonderful uh, distribution of our recognition of those who are working in this field because we know how hard it is. I am thankful to them uh, that they have done this and uh, in recognition of my husband's work, I hope the work will continue in the way that my husband, I am selfish enough to believe, 
in the way that my husband would have wanted it to continue. Thank you for giving me this opportunity.